Good morning, my name is Maureen Chung. Welcome to Daily Devotional of September the 8th. The Bible passage is Psalm 51, verse 13 to 19. The title is Praise from a Contrite Heart. We've been meditating on the prophet Nathan's confrontation with King David after his sin of adultery with Bathsheba and the plotted killing of Uriah on the battlefield. David confessed his sins. God forgave him and he was spared from death. But he still had to bear the consequences of his evil deeds in God's eyes. Psalm 51 has this in the title, For the Director of Music, a Psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. This is a heart-wrenching psalm to meditate on. I have divided it into three meditations over three days. Day 1, verse, verses 1 to 6, cry from a broken heart. Day 2, verses 7 to 12, plea from a penitent heart. And day 3, verses 13 to 19, praise from a contrite heart. Today is day 3. Let's read Psalm 51, verse 13 to 19. Bearing in mind my title, praise from a contrite heart, the result of God's mercy. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. The final section opens with verse 13. Then I would teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. A healed person can look back at his disease fully aware of its seriousness, yet able to talk about it openly in a non-attached manner, simply because he knows he's fully healed. A forgiven sinner can look back at his sin, fully aware of its seriousness, yet able to warn others openly about it, simply because he knows he has been fully forgiven. Indeed, it was serious, but it doesn't hurt him anymore, simply because he has been cured. Therefore, he can give his testimony and warn other sinners. He accepts his responsibilities to his fellow human beings. Charles Coulson, 1931 to 2012, was an American attorney who was a political advisor to President Richard Nixon from 1969 to 1970. He helped to cheat at the presidential election and then took part in the cover-up. He was charged and convicted and went to prison for four years. He was debarred and couldn't practice law again. However, he accepted Christ Jesus as his savior in prison. He founded the Prison Fellowship and the Prison Fellowship International. He became a writer and speaker for God. He was an excellent illustration of verse 13. David is aware of the blood guilt he committed. He murdered Uriah by his royal order, but God spared him from death. With thankfulness, he sings of God's righteousness. Verse 14. He was a prolific writer of psalms that were sung in worship services. He is more than willing to open his mouth to declare God's praise. Verse 15. David accepts his responsibilities to God. Is there anything we can do to earn our forgiveness? No, 
not sacrifices or burnt offerings. They are symbols without meaning if the heart of repentance is not there. Verses 16 to 17 are some of my favorite verses in the Bible. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O Lord, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. God loves a broken and contrite heart. However, verses 18 to 19 say that there will be sacrifices, but now the symbols are a true reflection of the contrite heart, as King David will lead his people in proper worship. These will be righteous sacrifices that delight the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2 teaches us, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. God wants us as living sacrifices. What have I learned? Guilt can never be buried, but has to be dealt with. How do people bury guilt? First, by denying it. A common excuse is that everyone is doing it. There is no right or wrong. Second, by shifting blame. They made me do it. It is like Adam blaming Eve for giving him the forbidden fruit. It is like Eve blaming the serpent for tempting her. It is like Satan blaming God for withholding the fruit from the tree of knowledge out of selfishness. We are creative in shifting blame. There are a lot of unhappy people pretending to be all right. How do we deal with guilt? By confessing to God and asking for forgiveness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 holds a conditional promise. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Ask God to lift our burden of guilt and he will restore us to joy and gladness. Exhale to let out the stale air. Inhale to bring in fresh air. With the filling of God's spirit, we can face the future. Our future obviously includes sinning no more and witnessing for God's goodness. It is the natural outflow of a heart full of love and gratitude. Dearest Jesus Christ, my Lord, thank you for sins pardoned and new life in the Holy Spirit. I am yours forever. I rejoice with a thankful heart. May your light shine through me as I testify for you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for praying with me and may God bless you. See you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.